I'm so pleased to be here together with um, uh, Jon Markus Lavik, the CEO, and I think you are the founder also of uh, Cognite, uh, uh, Jon Larik. T yeah, thanks a lot great. for joining. Yeah, sure. Thanks a lot for you know for having me. I think when I'm thinking about very successful startups in Norway, and when I'm thinking about truly digital companies in Norway, and when I'm thinking about digital experts in Norway, it all comes uh, to your direction, uh, Marcus, <coughs> Marcus, both your, you as a person, but also Cognite as a company. So, uh, uh, and, and the reason I would like to have this chat is that I think all of us have seen how this COVID situation has really fast forward uh, digitalized the entire societies, not only companies, so small and big, but also societies at large. And I would like to, to discuss that a little bit with you, how you see that. So, but maybe you should start with, with the Cognite. Could you give us some, some brief explanation on, on what, what that company is actually doing? Yeah, no, I mean, I think we're all, uh, in, in our personal lives, we're all uh, digitalized, right? We're using smartphones and uh, you know, both you know, how we interact with each other and how we interact with uh, consumer companies like Spotify or YouTube or, or, you know, or other companies is now completely digitalized. And, in many ways, friction-free. It's very easy. It works. But moving into the physical world and in you know industrial you know world, uh, we're in many ways still living in 1999, as I like to say. Wow. It's it's paper-based systems. It's um, it's really ineffective, full of waste, and it also needs to be, be transformed because it's not always environmentally you know uh, friendly, if you will. So Cognite is a is a software company. Focused on industrial digital transformation, really, you know, making an industry more, you know, more, you know, financially sustainable, but also even more importantly, it needs to be environmentally, you know, sustainable. Mm. But to work with this industry, uh, kind of old uh, giants, as you do, that that's not easy. Are, are they ready to be digitalized uh, and actually opening up the way they used to do business? 2020, I think, was really a year that made executives of large industrial companies realize they need to move, both because of COVID and the way of working, but of course also because of the increasingly environmental, you know, in, in, in pressure. So I would say, uh, you know, industry is really starting to move, and I think over the next five to ten years, we'll see uh, the the asset-intensive industries change as much as our personal lives has changed over the last, you know, couple of decades. Uh, how can a relatively small country like Norway and a startup like uh, Cognite uh, was some time ago, how, how, how can we compete up against those uh, global uh, giant platform players? Well, I think, you know, first of all, we should look at those platform players as great partners. Of course, they provide infrastructure and capabilities that we 10 years ago would have had to build ourselves. So Cognite is a startup would have taken a long time, you know, just to get going. So for us, it's that plus, of course, 5G and all the things that you are coming in with is infrastructure that enable companies like Cognite to get much quicker to market. But, uh, but of course, also, you can't be uh, naive. Uh, so these, these people or these companies can, of course, also eat you if you're not really uh, and making sure that uh, you are competitive. And uh, that's one of the uh, key advantages of coming out of Norway, I would say, if you can combine world-class software engineering with deep domain, industrial domain expertise. So what Cognat did is really to, we are, we are a global company, we want to compete you know, globally, but we have chosen areas where we have an unfair advantage of coming to Norway, which is a combination of industrial domain expertise and software expertise. And and through this, uh, we believe we can win. But now you really talk about uh, competence and talents. Yes. Uh, and uh, the last time we met, we also discussed that a little bit. And and you really have been able to to attract the uh, the global talents uh, to come here to freezing Norway, <laughs> a small country. Uh, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, no, I think, of course, uh, a limitation of coming from Norway uh, is, of course, we have a small market in terms of, of, of customers, but it's also a small, small market with respect to talent. But I think uh, there's a couple of things we have. We have a way of working, collaborative, team-based, uh, that a lot of people uh, want. We are, you know, quite a bit ahead in terms of being, uh, thinking about modern technologies and being, you know, efficient. And I think also COVID and all the 
disruption and political turmoil in the world has also uh, you know, meant that a lot of people have looked at Norway as actually as a good place to live. So as a strategy, we uh, build a global company out of Norway, but we also recruit uh, internationally into Norway. So we now have more than 50, five zero nationalities uh, so basically, you know, you know, working for uh, uh, for Cognat, you know, here at Fornebu, uh, where you are also located uh, wow. in North. Hmm. Well, that's 50 nationalities and you are recruiting uh, also real deep uh, experts even coming from some of these uh, global platform players. Yes, even from uh, people moving from Silicon Valley, Google, Amazon, Facebook, Microsoft, uh, that's in, in Seattle, obviously. So we are we are recruiting, of course, yeah, you know, all over the world, Brazil, you know, Eastern Europe, Asia, uh, all over, obviously. <laughs> we, I think, I, I, I'm really uh, having the same views on this, and and uh, we also see that um, the uh, not only the Norwegian way of working, but but also the Norwegian culture uh, is actually quite attractive. There are small distances between top and and the bottom in the organization. There are, are uh, small distances between big and, and small companies, even with the government, and that is really helping when you have to move fast and when you, when, yeah, basically when you need to develop new business models and, and the, the partnership that you're talking about. Yeah, but of course it's also important, uh, you know, culture is very important because uh, when you have people from so many different, you know, you know nationalities, it's, um, some people are used to very hierarchical, the boss decides, other are used to very flat, like Norwegians, where they decide what they want to do themselves almost. So you need yeah. to create that. So that's where you, we've spent a lot of time on creating this common culture, common direction, vision, obviously, having uh, modern ways of setting uh, objectives. We use something called OKRs, objective and key results, to measure sort of quarterly, you know, semi-annually. And of course, uh, we, we also use old-fashioned uh, KPIs. <laughs> you need to find the right mix of these things. So this is, of course, really uh, uh, exciting. I, you know, I find it exciting, but it's also quite challenging, especially when you hire a lot of new people. You need to uh, reiterate and reiterate and reiterate uh, many times because uh, you, know, you know people may have been in the organization just for a month or three or six. Uh, <laughs> But in this very fast moving uh, uh, kind of development that we see now and also with the digitalization accelerating even more and also being coming with new disruptive uh, business models. Uh, what, what, will, what, what will kind of uh, be the difference between the loser and the winner share? Because there will be losers uh, in, in what we are seeing now. So what, what, what would it really take to, to win? And now I'm talking a little bit more general than, than just your business or my business. Yeah, no, I, I think, um, but I'm also seeing what you are doing when I talk to Telnor uh, now, uh, in contrast to some years ago, there's much, you know, much more diversity, different types of people. And I think that's part of the winning. Oh, you know, I'm rest to hear that. I'm yeah, 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 of course, you, you know, you, you and I are boring Norwegian uh, males, but uh, you have a lot of diversity in your organization, I think, and I think the same here. I think that's really important. That's at least something I've learned over the years. I think you need to create a learning organization that can learn and adapt uh, quickly. I think that's going to be critical. Uh, uh, and I think also a new thing that I think industry, uh, I'm not talking about the telecom industry now, but at least asset intensive industries, need to be a lot better at collaborating and partnering uh, I think a lot of the industrial technology companies or industrial companies are trying to basically take the whole cake to themselves. Uh, and I think that's a losing recipe. So to be good at partnering, collaborating, you know, you know, maybe even with you know, with, uh, with competitors. So you have competition, as you call it. I think that have the confidence, the self confidence, to actually know what you're going to be really good at, and creating this partner. Mm. system so it's going to be increasingly uh, important there's no way Telenor even as a very large company can be good at everything you need to partner you need to be able to and and, and, you, and if you're good at it that's really a competitive strength do you think that uh, on what you just said do you think that um, the all this partnership and for me a partnership is very different from just uh, 
having a vendor or a customer client relationship. It, it's go much deeper uh, into into uh, working together. But do you think that going forward we will see uh, a more, what should I call it, a more blurred, not so clear uh, distinction between IT players and manufacturers and telecom companies and system integrators and all the different type of, of industries that we used to, to have. And now you will see partnership where is a li- everyone is basically do, uh, do everything. Uh, and also you will see that maybe you are both a partner uh, and, a, and a competitor with the same, sure. same company at the same time. Uh, sure. Do you see that to happen? Yeah, no, I, you know, absolutely. I think uh, that happens. But, but then again, it's important for that to work. You need to be clear on business models and incentives, if you will. What you know, what drives Telenor, for example? What drives Cognite? What what drives other companies to understand? I think if you understand that and you have good alignment around incentives and value creation and value capture, then you have at least, the, in my view, the most important basics for a great uh, partnership and a great collaboration. So I think that's really important because uh, f- for partnerships to mean something, it must it must uh, it must mean that uh, we we are driving our our companies in, in you know in a, in the same as a common direction. Yeah. Let me end with one one topic that I think uh, is of interest for both of us, and that is the five uh, G uh, when it comes uh, and. I have often called it kind of the perfect storm when you have AI, 5G, and an Internet of Things merging together as, a, as a three different technologies. Uh, and with 5G also moving into edge computing and, and getting much closer to, to where, where data is being produced. How do you see that uh, in your business? Well, that's a perfect question. Uh, something, an area I'm really um, passionate about because the one way of explaining industrial uh, digital transformation is that uh, it's a journey or there's steps up, uh, you know, um, a ladder, if you will. And the, fir- the first step is just to make data available f- for people to make better decisions. So basically dashboarding, you know, giving mo- me what I need. It's like, uh, you know, searching on Google as a consumer. The second step is then to start to use the data information and optimize it uh, using AI, if you will, or analytics. Um, so that actually you can give, for example, people informed decisions. Now you should do this because this is happening or something like that. But then sort of the next and the holy grail is exactly is you can you can get you can take people out of a lot of the dangerous, boring, difficult yeah. you know, works and do autonomous operations. And to do that, and that's really what we need to get to. Then you need. Uh, the networking, the 5G, you need the, you know, the sensors, you need uh, combined with cl- you know, cloud and edge. Uh, mm-hmm. That together with software, you know, like we, uh, of course, are, are developing as well, then you can close the loop and really have autonomous uh, operations of uh, the physical world, you know, a factory or a power station or, or, or uh, you know, a, a wind park. And that's really exciting, and, and that's one of the areas I also really hope uh, we can collaborate uh, as, yeah. as Telenor and, and Cognite is. And I think, and, and one of the first areas, and I get really, really excited now, but is all autonomous inspections using robots, whether being drones, yeah. underwater robots, or or robots, uh, you know, moving around in, in the ground. There, actually, you can start to do. The job that people do today uh, uh, in not a very good way, but do it through cheap robots using 5G and software, uh, you know, based on AI. And then you you close the loop. You have autonomous industry. No, I absolutely agree. And and uh, in in Telenor, what, what we have kind of we have discussed a lot. What what will be the new normal, or what will come out of of uh, this COVID situation? And and we have talked about three points. One is the uh, Digitalization of customer journeys, uh, digital first. Sure. Yeah. Uh, it's the, uh, the modernized organization. You have to to have different type of business models. But the third one is what we call zero touch operation, and that is exactly yeah. what you're talking about. What, why do we have humans to run run the operation, and and why don't we use machines actually to not only run operation but also do predictable maintenance, uh, such that we can do something even before before things happen. So. Uh, we are, we are really sharing the same views on this. 
Uh, you know, actually, a fun a fun story in, in this context is uh, you know we all know in the car industry uh, when they're man manufacturing a car they have lots of robots, but they are typically paintings or they're screwing in screws and doing stuff like that. But it turns out that these robots also needs maintenance and inspection. So now we have are working on a project where we're using robots to monitor the robots. Uh, wow. <laughs> uh, okay. That's really cool. Uh, but this is and again, you need 5G, you need IoT, you need software. Uh, and you need some robots. Uh, so I think this is, yeah. And the thing is, this is happening now. This is not going to, you know, happen in ten years. It's happening in 2021, 2022.